To start the story, we need to go back. And I mean way back. Back before Enerjack even, and to be honest, back before mostly anything. This is the beginning, and in the beginning on Mobius, much like in the book of Genesis, there was nothing but darkness until suddenly there was light. On Mobius, echidnas were the first species to evolve out of the primordial ooze. The echidnas pretty quickly developed their intelligence, and pretty shortly after, other species would soon begin to follow. At one point, the other animals on Mobius decided that it would be for the best to pool their knowledge together as to build one of the most ideal civilizations where everybody contributed something. But the echidnas decided that it would actually be for the best if they went their separate ways, as the echidnas feared that in the wrong hands their advanced technology could cause more harm than good. The echidna people quite frankly prospered on their own, and that was done in no small part due to the fact that they studied extensively chaos energy, which emanated from the chaos emeralds. Two such researchers of chaos energy had gained the attention of the ancient walkers, and these two were given the opportunity to shed their corporeal forms and ascend into the chaos force, kind of like force ghosts. Those two researchers were actually Enerjack and his love interest Aurora La. Although Aurora La transcended and became a sort of force of good as she became a benevolent goddess, her significant other Enerjack soon found himself to be corrupted by the power and was deemed to be even too much of a threat for the ancient walkers to destroy. So the only option they had was to scatter Enerjack throughout the Chaos Force. And of course, this isn't the end of Enerjack, or this video would be much shorter. Enerjack would continue to reincarnate himself inside of new hosts as time went on. The first host was during the Forgotten War, a time that, like the name suggests, was forgotten to many, and as such there isn't a ton of info on this version of Enerjack. It's assumed that like Enerjack, this host was a chaos scientist who also found himself to be corrupted by the power. And this would eventually lead to the two warring factions during this Forgotten War, with one side actually being a group dedicated to Aurora La, to put aside their differences and face on Enerjack. Although, how they managed to defeat Enerjack, or any details about what he had done, are completely lost to time. Now, these two events we've looked at with Enerjack so far happened thousands of years before any of the current pre-Genesis Wave Freedom Fighter stuff that we're used to looking at. And so, although we're going to be fast forwarding a little bit, we're still a few hundred years away as we look at the next Enerjack, who was an echidna named Dimitri. Dimitri was a direct descendant of the echidnas who had managed to initially lift Echidnaopolis out of the ground thanks to the power of the Chaos Emeralds, and in doing so, they managed to avoid an incoming asteroid. And I guess science really seems to flourish in this family. Now, fun fact, Dimitri is actually Knuckles' great-great-granduncle, and that's because according to Ken Penders, pretty much every echidna is related to Knuckles in some way or another if they're important. He and his brother Edmund, who was actually the first guardian of the Emeralds, were each researchers looking into a way to return Echidnopolis to the ground, and they had devised a way to do so by using a chaos siphoning device. This device would slowly lower the floating islands back into the ground, and they would rejoin Mobius. This notion, however, was ultimately shut down by the Echidna Council, due to the Council's idea of limiting the use of access technology. This caused an enraged Dimitri to take matters into his own hands. He attempted to use the Chaos Siphon device on his own, but this device was unfortunately overloaded by the sheer force of the Chaos Emeralds. The device would then explode and disappear along with Dimitri and all but one of the Chaos Emeralds that the Echidnas possessed. This meant that the floating city now had to rely on just one Chaos Emerald. This was discovered by Edmund, but before Edmund had much time to worry, Dimitri returned, fused with Chaos Energy and corrupted by Enerjack, who had by this point begun to take hold. This new Enerjack decided that he would lay waste to Mobius and reshape it in his own vision as he created a very evil-looking Dark Tower. Enerjack would enslave Echidnopolis, with its citizens' plan to pull a floating city across Mobius as Enerjack lay waste to everything in his path. Luckily, the Echidnas were saved by an unlikely ally. Although the Echidnas had left the other species and didn't really talk to any of them, they did always have close ties with the Fire Ants, who actually managed to chew through this dark tower and caused it to collapse onto Enerjack. This Dimitri slash Enerjack was then assumed to be dead by even his own son Maniker, but it wouldn't be long before his son would notice an ominous chaos glow from the rubble, and this glow would go on to corrupt Maniker and would lead him to form a group known as the Dark Legion. The Dark Legion is this technocratic cult, which means that they really like technology, like maybe a little bit too much. And 
This cult came at a pretty good time because it managed to rally the echidnas who were against the council's idea to limit the use of technology. And these people would go on to be a threatening force for centuries to come. Dimitri would spend centuries of his life buried underneath the rubble of his tower, unable to die due to his link with Enerjack who still inhabited him, which led to, understandably, his growing madness. Eventually, Enerjack would escape the tomb, and in a demonstration of power, he would send Knuckles and Archimedes into the desert via teleportation. Knuckles and Archie would travel through the desert until ultimately arriving at Enerjack's new fortress, this time not a tower, but a whole citadel. Knuckles in the Citadel would have to fight his mind-controlled friends as well as Enerjack. Now listen, I kid you not, Enerjack is yet again foiled by fire ants. These guys manage to get a rocket and it sends the Citadel into space with Enerjack in it. Listen, I'm just saying Enerjack, maybe the next time that you build a fortress you should make one that fire ants can't get into? Like, I don't know, I feel like modern builders are able to do this, so why not you? Also, here's a fun little side fact. I called Archimedes Archie in my Dr. Fenativas video, and that's because I'm a dummy who's only ever read his name, and I always assumed that it was pronounced Archimedes, which led to his nickname being Archie in my mind, but it's actually Archie, and it's something like Archimedes. 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 The more you know, and I mean, I guess we all learn from the mistakes we make as kids. Now, of course... Space isn't enough to stop Enerjack, and we'd see him return again as he blew up out of a Dimitri statue that the Dark Legion had. The Dark Legion, of course, are simps, and right away they kneeled for Enerjack, as he explained that he was Dimitri, and Dimitri was a character who they held in high regards due to his son founding this group. Enerjack would then go on to kidnap Knuckles, and would subject him to torture as he teleported him into space where he mostly just talked to him and tried to convince him to join him. Then he would teleport him into the ocean where Knuckles then had to fight off some sea beasts, and once Knuckles managed to fight off those beasts, oh no. Enerjack would then send him plummeting to the ground from thousands upon thousands of feet in the air, only to stop him in the last minute and demand that Knuckles bend the knee to him. Knuckles would go on to mock Enerjack's response by blowing a raspberry at him. This would lead to Enerjack, understandably, being pretty upset as he decided that, well, enough is enough with Knuckles and picked him apart at the atomic level, ultimately destroying Knuckles completely and leaving no remains. Believing that Knuckles was dead, which I mean makes sense when he was destroyed from such a small molecular level, Enerjack would then go on to create a large golden arch, which would lead his people back to Echinopolis, and he also, for good measures, tied up Knuckles' friends in the desert to leave them to their fate as they slowly cooked to death. Luckily, Knuckles was rescued by the Ancient Walkers. Knuckles then had a short moment to understand that he was rescued because of a bigger picture idea where the Ancient Walkers needed him for more things in the future. And before he could really say or think anything else, he was teleported back into the desert where he managed to rescue his friends. Now meanwhile at this point, Enerjack was long gone as he was busy leading his people back to the Promised Land while also fighting off the Echidna's longtime rival, the Dingoes, as well as the other Echidnas that didn't ultimately join the Dark Legion. Things actually ultimately would have worked out pretty well for him as he was managing pretty competently to hold off both groups, but there was one little fact which is that there was a being that was equally strong or maybe stronger than Enerjack that managed to get the best of him. This being in question is Mammoth Mogul, a character that we've seen in previous videos, and like Enerjack, he has a huge amount of control over Chaos Energy. At some point, I'm gonna have to make a video about this guy because he really shows up a lot throughout the Archie Sonic comics, but today isn't that day, so just know that he's a really strong mammoth who's been around for a really long time and has a ton of chaos power. Enerjack, being trapped under that rubble for so long, had really not anticipated to encounter such a powerful being now that he was back, which left him, understandably, pretty caught off guard. Mammoth Mogul then took this opportunity to pretty much belittle Enerjack and then siphon out all of his powers, leaving Dimitri alone without Enerjack inside of him anymore as just a shriveled old man falling to the ground only to be rescued by Knuckles. Dimitri was very likely the longest an echidna has ever been possessed by Enerjack, which honestly is an impressive feat in of itself. But considering that he spent most of that time buried underneath rubble, one has to wonder kind of if he was really all that successful in what he set out to do, and maybe what a more competent Enerjack might look like. When we left off, Enerjack had been expelled from Dimitri's body, and it would remain that way for quite some time. Dimitri would go on to mechanically enhance his aged body with the help of the Dark Legion, and despite the fact that he had lost Enerjack, Dimitri remained determined to regain his power in order to shape Mobius in his vision. 
He would even go as far as to kidnap Knuckles in an attempt to surgically figure out what made him so powerful. Dimitri hoped that he could use Knuckles as a way to repower himself with the power that he once had from his chaos siphoning device which Mammoth Mogul had sapped away from him. Unfortunately for Dimitri, this wouldn't be possible and we'd have to fast forward a bit into the future and it's here that we would meet Dr. Fenativus. Dr. Fenativus was one of the greatest echidna minds, but had unfortunately gone mad under similar circumstances to Dimitri. Finitivus would honestly play all sides in the story in order to achieve his goal. He would start by convincing the Dark Legion that he wished to resurrect Enerjack in order to defeat the Dingoes. Then he would go on to tell Dimitri that he could aid him in regaining his power if he let him do some surgery on him, but ultimately would just make him weaker and more dependent on him by removing his body and leaving him as this head inside of a glass ball. The Doctor would then go on to convince Knuckles' father, the current Guardian, Locke, to go search for the other Guardians who had gone missing, thus leaving the Master Emerald in his hands. Oh, and by the way, those Guardians weren't just missing, they were all pretty much largely deceased at the hands of Dr. Fenativus, who had experimented on them, and then once he learned what he could, he launched them into the Twilight Zone, which is basically a void, empty zone of nothingness. Dimitri later would attempt to escape from Fenativus and warn the Freedom Fighters as well as Eggman, but he would be too late little too late at this point, as by this point Fenativus would have already reunited a now splintered Dark Legion into kidnapping Knuckles. Fenativus would explain to Knuckles that they need him to save their people as the Eggman Empire had laid waste to about 90% of the Echidna people. Although he did kind of leave out the portion of it where Dr. Fenativus had disabled the security systems to allow Eggman to do all that. This would cause Knuckles to panic and attempt to use the Master Emerald to set things right. However, unbeknownst to Knuckles, Fenativus Fenativus had been using his Dark Chaos powers to tamper with the Master Emerald. This new cursed Master Emerald supercharged Knuckles and allowed Enerjack to enter his body. This new Enerjack, in the body of a biologically altered being, would quickly pose a massive threat to the world of Mobius as he effortlessly relocated every dingo to the desert. Which seems to actually weirdly be a theme with Enerjack. And then he went on to Thanos snap the general out of existence, also kind of a theme with Enerjack. Enerjack would even handle attacks from both Sonic and Shadow without really breaking a sweat, and he was only temporarily incapacitated by Eggman who had made a temporary truce with the Freedom Fighters in order to stop Enerjack. Eggman would place Enerjack inside of one of his egg grapes, but this egg grape would hardly be able to contain Enerjack as he managed to supercharge them and then destroy a massive portion of Eggman's city. After laying waste to Eggman's city, he would go on to do the same to Eggman's fleet, causing Eggman to retreat before he sustained more damage. Although powerful, this version of Enerjack wasn't without his limits, and he soon found himself needing to return to the Master Emerald for a recharge. And it's here that Sonic would finally catch up to Enerjack. Sonic would use the Master Emerald to supercharge himself in order to try and level the playing field. Unfortunately though, even in this super state, Sonic struggled to keep toe to toe with Knuckles. Luckily for Sonic, Locke paid the ultimate sacrifice while sitting atop the Master Emerald, and he managed to give his own life in order to save his sons. And with that, we've officially reached the end of Enerjack. Knuckles would go on to fight Fenativus multiple times, but this demigod was no more. Except, what if things went a little bit differently? For this, we need to look 200 years into the future in an alternate timeline. Just know that none of this will be taking place in the main world that we normally look at. In this future, Silver the Hedgehog trains with Mammoth Mogul. It's here that Silver's mentor informs him that someone from another universe has entered their own, and wishes that Silver goes to investigate. While searching for this, Silver would get shot by some kind of laser beam, and while pinned down, the intruder would show himself, and wait, Hold on, that looks a little bit like Vector, doesn't it? Find the computer room! The two would fight until suddenly this metallic Vector would go on the run. This creature would attempt to attack Silver from behind, but luckily, Silver was saved by an elderly Echidna. This Echidna is Edmund, and in this universe, he is the last Guardian. The two would attempt to figure out what this creature is, but before they really had much time to figure anything out, this creature would summon a warp ring and begin to disappear. Silver would follow close behind before the warp ring closed, and what he would find on the other side was a desolate world lacking any sunlight, and in front of him was a giant monument to Enerjack. Pretty shortly after this, Silver would be greeted by a whole gang of metallic chaotix, who would surround him, and even though they had the upper hand on Silver, he continued to fight against them and managed to hold his ground. 
Little did Silver know, Enerjack was watching all of this as it happened, and it would lead to him cutting things short with an echidna who we can assume is Remington. And yes, Remington is related to Knuckles somehow. Enerjack would sap away Remington's life before showing that he had done the same to countless others, and even having ended the life of Sonic and his own villains. Thankfully, Silver would find himself rescued by familiar faces, although with new names. These here are the last of the Freedom Fighters, and they explain that these creatures are known as Prelates, which are beings created by Enerjack using cores, which are essentially the souls of fallen Mobians, and that these Mobians are all that stand between Enerjack and total world domination. The group would then take Silver back to their hidden headquarters, and it's here that Silver is shown what their plan is. It's a sword, they're going to poke Enerjack with a sword. But to be fair, this isn't just any sword, this is actually a magic sword and it'll sap away Enerjack's powers. With Enerjack's power gone, they could then go on to take the cores and restore the lives of the fallen. Enerjack would then exclaim that he's always been watching and he's known where their base is since the start, but he likes to toy with these freedom fighters for fun. Enerjack would destroy this quote unquote hidden base and then go on once again to summon the chaotic prelates and on top of that he would summon the prelate of Julie Sue, which is Janica, which is actually this version's Lara Sue's mother and then he would force them to fight their friends and loved ones. Silver would focus his attention on Enerjack, as he used his telepathic powers to launch the top of a building with Enerjack on it into the air. He would then go back to defeat Prelate Julie Sue, and the Freedom Fighters would continue to destroy the other Prelates. With each Prelate destroyed, Silver would hold on to their course to stop Enerjack from using them. But Enerjack would eventually return and just watch them kind of curiously from the air. Eventually, Enerjack would land and use his immense power to demonstrate that, well, he's only let Silver believe that he had any chance in defeating him. He would plow through them, and with the cores once again lost, it's revealed that Enerjack has taken Scarlet, which is this world's version of Bunny, and that he's going to take her core to add to his collection. This enrages Demo, which is this world's version of Bean, who is also her significant other in this world, and honestly, it's kind of weird seeing him as a serious character and not a goofy Bean the Dynamite. Enerjack would then go on to take both their cores pretty effortlessly, and he would go on to pound Silver into the ground. With Silver stuck into the ground, Enerjack would then defeat pretty much every one of the Freedom Fighters and take all of their cores, with the exception of Janica. Enerjack would basically do that typical villain thing where he just kind of monologues for way too long while holding up Janica as he talked about how he wanted to rule the world with his family, and this would give Silver just enough time to power himself up and free himself. An incredibly frustrated Silver would then launch a giant stone fist right at Enerjack, but despite the size of this, Enerjack would just punch through it like it was nothing. Both Silver and Enerjack would have a super powered fight in the air, with the two of them honestly being pretty closely matched and Enerjack just barely beating out Silver. Enerjack would go on to summon a prelate army and plus 10 points to anyone who can name all of these characters shown on screen right now. Janica would take on the prelates as Silver went back at it again with Enerjack taking him into a psionic hold and dragging him across Angel Island, through rivers and mountains, and making the mistake of believing that he had managed to kill Enerjack. Of course though, he didn't, and Enerjack returned to the air pretty much undamaged. It's here that Silver would remember the words of his masters, about the corruption that power can bring to one, and how nothing can ever really beat chaos but chaos itself. This causes Silver to have an epiphany, and he uses his psionic powers to redirect Enerjack's attacks to him, which finally manages to cause some kind of significant damage to Enerjack, as nothing in this world is more powerful than Enerjack, so of course, Enerjack should be able to hurt himself. Silver would continue to harm Enerjack in this way, until finally Enerjack had enough and attempted to lunge himself at Silver to finish him off. But suddenly, he found himself frozen in midair, just inches away from the magic sword which had stunned him. Janica would go on to recite a chant which took Enerjack's powers away from Knuckles, but this power wouldn't be returned to the Chaos Force. Instead, we would find a new incarnation of Enerjack standing over the weak and decrepit Knuckles. This was Janica, or Janajack as I've seen her called online, but unlike previous Enerjacks, she doesn't seem corrupted by Enerjack. Instead, she seemed fully in control and ready to restore the world to its former glory. The weakened Knuckles would thank Janajack for saving him, but would mention that he needs some of his power back so that he can help her rebuild. 
Of course, Janajak could tell that this now free Knuckles, after years of corruption, was still mad, and he could not be trusted with any kind of power. So she destroyed the sword which would contain any remaining power, leaving Knuckles to grovel on the floor over the sword. With that, we come to the end of Enerjack, as we've seen all the incarnations that they've taken within the Archie Sonic comics. Silver would return to his timeline, and Janajack would go on to restore her home as a benevolent being, as the first Enerjack to actually seem to use her powers for good. With that, we've reached the end of our saga, and I want to thank you for watching it this far along. I've wanted to do a video on Enerjack for a really long time, but I've never really felt well enough equipped to do it, and so sincerely I want to thank everybody who supported me for the past almost a year now to get to this point. Typically, I thank someone at the end of my video if they've helped inspire me to make a video, but I can't quite pin down one person alone who suggested Enerjack as a lot of people have throughout the time, so I'm just going to kind of pick one at random that I stumbled on first, and that person is Cassidy Arnold. So thank you Cassidy, and of course, thank you to everybody else who suggested such a fun character to look at. If you feel like I've earned any kind of like, subscribe, comment, or whatever, feel free to do that, but as always, you don't have to, and I just hope that you have a good day. About how the about the corrupt uh, about the corruption that power can bring and about uh, uh, about the power uh jeez about the corruption that power can bring about the power <sighs> Dimitri was a d Dimitri was a d so many d's Enerjack would enslave a kidnopolis with its Enerjack would enslave oh my god what the heck an unlucky ally unable to die due to his link with Enerjack who had still in that Unable to die due to his link with Enerjack, who's still in that inhabited.